Hi guys, it's Luke here from Simbox in association with Clint Patrick. Something a bit different today, uh, Rhiannon Dolfora. So you've got a bit of experience of training around at different gyms. Yeah. Um, you're only 13 years of age, but I've seen footage of you sparring, training. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Where did the, the hunger for, for boxing come from? So my dad's friend opened the gym. My dad asked me, did I want to go? So I said, I said to him, yeah. And the first time I absolutely hated it. The only bit I liked was the exercises because I used to do swimming before that. So like the exercise we do like some stuff before swimming. It's like warm up and that. So I was like used to that bit and that's what got me to like it a little bit more. But I did absolutely hate the boxing side of it, just the exercise I liked. And then my dad just said, keep going, you'll learn to like it. And I kept going. Then I had two skills about one in December and then one March of last year. And it was the start of it was the last lockdown that my dad was saying to me, if you want like to like boxing GB and like you want all these like your goals like to happen, you've got to start training harder. And he got um Ashley Fearfane to call me and speak to me about like everyone like there's a hundreds of thousands of people who want the same goal as you. It's who works the hardest gets it. That's great advice and coming from someone like Ashley Fifa and he's so experienced, you know, it yeah. must have been something that you really took on board because at 13, you know, you could be easily, you know, waylaid into doing wrong things or just sitting at home watching yeah. computer games or sitting on YouTube and playing Fortnite like kids do nowadays. So to hear that from somebody that experiences Ashley must have been a great experience for you. Yeah, it was. It made me everything like click because especially the stories my dad told me about Ashley as well. So everything just like came to play sort of thing, and especially when I met him. It was um like you could tell he was a very hard working person because the way his pads were and like, everything was like quite clear. So you, when your dad, you know, he's a big believer in yourself. He must be a, a great beacon of light uh, for guidance and advice as he guides your career, your young career. You know, again, to keep on back to it, you're only thirteen. How much of a, an inspiration is your dad, and how much do you look to him for guidance and advice? Very big, especially because the people he's been around. Like he always says, but like you got to build a profile for yourself. So. <laughs> He owns my Twitter account for me because, to be honest, I've got no idea how Twitter works. <laughs> but um, like in the actual like box like the sport, he always like shows me like the right people to go with. Always takes me there. So that's the best, like one of the best things about my dad because he knows like the best people in the business. Yeah, absolutely. And as I say, you've been around a few different gyms. We're at Brian Rose's gym here in Blackpool today. I've seen you at Kieran Farrell's gym in yeah. Haywood, but. Bigger than that, you've been out to Las Vegas, you've been out in, in the gyms out there. Tell us a little bit about that and your experiences out there. Well, everyone's like really, really loud in there. And I have a bit of a story about Kel Brook, about the Raiders gym as well. So, the day before I went to Raiders gym, I was at the pool in the MGM and Kel Brook was there. And I went to get a picture of Kel Brook and he was really drunk, like pretending to be on the phone and everything. And I, um, when, he, when I got a picture of him, it was like dead quick. And the next day, the morning, I go to the gym and Fight Channel was filming me. I still, to this day, don't even know who it was. And Kel Buck comes up to me, as me and my dad are waiting in Starbucks, and says, you're that girl who's on that Fight Channel the Raiders gym, aren't you? Because everyone in the gym just films you randomly. Yeah. Like, especially, obviously, like, the big ones, like Badu Jack and Javante, Javante Davis, like, they always film the big ones. But also, like, the young ones as well, because they could be, like, future world yeah. champions. And they could, like put on their fight channel or like their Instagrams, old videos. Yeah. So like, that only they've got like original footage of it. So everyone likes to film the young ones in there as well. So at your age, you know, you, you're around these guys, like Badu Jack, Javante Davis, Floyd Mayweather, uh, Cal Brook. You know, you're only 13 again. Um, and you know, if, if you're in those kind of gyms and someone's putting a camera in your face, like, how do you feel about that? And you know, adjusting to being around such big names? Well, I went there twice in my gym, like in that same week. And the first time I went, I was very, I was quite nervous because I was quite a bit more shy then. But I eventually, just, the second time I adjusted and it was the first time they filmed me. But like, I didn't even realise they were filming me until my dad said like turn around. And like, there was like two cameras there, like proper like big ones over people's shoulders. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God. Like, I was on the pads with Jeff Mather as well. So I was like, I was trying to focus on getting everything right because it's Jeff Mather yeah. and there's two cameras behind me. And there's a bunch of like there's a bunch of really good fighters in the gym, so you don't want to like disappoint. Yeah, absolutely. So you know it's crazy to think that you know if you look at other girls in your age group, the kind of experience that you've got is is 
you know, far out where you where you naturally should be at your age. You know, to say you've been on the pads with Jeff May, whether yeah. you've been around Floyd May, whether you've been in the gym in Las Vegas. You know, I dare say there's some professional fighters out there today that have had 10, 20 professional fights that haven't had the, the training and the experiences that you've had. It's, it's all standing you in good stead yeah. as you continue to move forward. Recently, you went out to Spain with Kieran, with your dad, Brian Rose, Bobby Rimmer for Brian's fight. Tell us about that experience and, you know, pandemic, no one's going on holiday, but you managed to get out there as business, of course. Brian had his fight and his win. Congrats to Brian on the win. But take us through your experiences of being on such a a high profile camp and I'm sure there's one or two sparring stories as well in there. Yeah. It was really good to see like the way Brian was. Like how like he was like not like nervous but like he like cooled down more towards the fight. Like a lot of other people get more like nervous towards the fight but he was actually more calm. You just think that's his experience and the yeah. fact that he's been around the block. Definitely yeah. And when Kieran got me sparring which I'm really grateful for because it helped me a lot. Especially like it helped me learn things because the girl was much more experienced because she was 18. Yeah, so sorry, just for the guys that are listening that haven't seen the clip, there's a clip on social media. We'll try and get hold of it for Simbox as well so it can go along with this interview. But Rihanna sparred a Spanish girl, she was 18. Rihanna, again, he's 13. It was downstairs in a Barcelona gym. It was something like that, a Rocky film. And you went yeah. in there, you know, you head guard on and you went in there with a girl that's five years older than you. But not just that, she's had a, a million and one exhibition bouts. So they don't track the records over there. Yeah. You went in and... Yeah, tell us from your point of view how it went. So everyone over, over like as soon as the start like the spa started and it started to get like a bit like not scrappy but like we got in close and we were like landing proper good shots. Everyone in the gym stopped what they were doing and came over and started watching. And one of the guys I, I like who worked in the gym I think like, I think he might have owned it or something. He um, was watching it, and as soon as I landed, I got shot on the girl. He just turned his head down, just walked away, because he was probably like, I get, I kind of get it, because like I'm a lot younger, so it's probably more disappointing, like when your fighters not doing as well as they should be. Yeah, absolutely. But again, when if you for the people that watch the clip, if you was to try and pick out who's the eighteen year old and who's yeah. the thirteen year old in there, you'd be picking you as the eighteen year old every time. But I bet that was something that you've took a lot of praise from and you know you, a lot of confidence from as well that you've gone in there and you've held your own at such a young age uh so vastly less experienced than the other girl but to go in there and hold your own the way you did i bet you're very proud of yourself yeah definitely the girl was very nice as well like after the spa like very polite person just like putting it out there she wasn't rude or anything so it, that was also good as well because it's not really the best thing when someone's like i saw, like, I saw a loser or like do people like sour with each other? Of course, uh, we're enjoying a lot of female British boxing at the minute. It's booming across the world, to be fair, not just British boxing. Clarissa Shields, Katie Taylor, Tasha Jonas coming up. You've got Chantel Cameron, uh, Shannon Courtney. Who's your favourite female boxer? Who do you look to for inspiration? Well, probably Natasha Jonas, just because all the things she's done for me, like let me in the gym throughout the camp um, for the Teddy Harper fight, which was like, I really like, thought of it like, oh my god like is this really happening like the first time i met tasha was she was fighting in the echo arena and like my first impression was she like jumped over the like the barrier just to get a picture of me and she was asking me all questions like to like to just like watching box and your box like what's your club you go to and i was just thinking like wow like she's just so nice like i want to be in her position one day where i can do that with fans you know it's really interesting that you should say that because I was talking to Tasha Jones yesterday, we done an interview, and she mentioned about Jane Couch being yeah. a, a, a huge motivation to her. And I said to Tasha, I said, with everything that you've achieved with the Olympics, being the first uh, female British boxer to be on Team GB, uh, being part of the first all British world title fight, I said, you're going to inspire the next generation. And here we are the very next day yeah. speaking to you, and you say like, you take a lot of inspiration from Tasha Jones. It's quite a special moment. And of course, being a fellow scouser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's a clever moment. But moving forward, you know, we're coming out of the back end of a pandemic. You've, of course, got your, your studies, your school work to do. But what's your plans? What what do you hope to achieve in, in your career in the short term and the long term? So in the short term, probably a few national titles, probably box for England. I'd like to win Tri-Nations as well. That'd be a big one for me. Then I'd, I'd like to box for GB in the Olympics. But because my dad said he'll take me over to the Mavis gym a lot, you know, you never know what's going to happen. Like, like Floyd Mayweather signs when he's like 17 or 18, so you never know if that could be myself, yeah. which I'm confident in myself that it could happen. So if I did get signed at a young age, 
I'd definitely probably miss out on the Olympics and go for that. Because I think that Floyd, like his name, just automatically when you get signed for them, you've automatically just like, it's gonna you haven't made it. Opportunities. You haven't made it. But like, in, in, you've got a big name out there already and there's so many more opportunities. But at the same time, when you sign for them, you've got to grind, you've got to like, like there's no cut on corners or anything. Absolutely, but from what I've seen you train today, you're out there with Brian Rolls, now Fielding, Craig Sumner, you know, you're keeping up with those guys. And these guys, like Brian Rolls, has been a pro for since I was in high school, going back 15 years, and you're there sharing a bag with him, sharing a training session. Again, it all leads back to great experience that's hopefully going to be beneficial to you moving forward. Yeah, definitely, yeah. So, yeah, guys, it's, it's a delight to speak to Rihanna today. It's a bright future. Remember the name, Rihanna DeForo. Rihanna, thanks for your time. Thanks for that.